every person should be enabled by each other mm -hmm. to really find, really find their personal truth and to be able to share that personal truth with the, the entire world. And it's it's almost like we're a making space for each other. Not mm -hmm. everybody just has to accommodate me. Yeah. yeah. You know? But as a parent, how do you make sure you communicate that to your child, especially, you know, you're, you're a mother as well. Yep. When you have a child that's going into those years when they're starting to really discover themselves and, and look for that identity and they're being everything around them is telling them these things. As a parent, how do you? We have a lot of conversations about it. I have yeah. endless conversations with, with my child about what he's perceiving in the world and what he's seeing and what he's making it mean mm -hmm. and alternative ideas. It's talking. It's, you know, we have so much time for. <laughs> it's, it's talking to your children. Right. I feel like we, f we fail to do that. But I mean, honestly, we lack intimacy as a species with each other. And that's something that I'm trying to change. But as parents, we need to have high degrees of intimacy with our children. And when I say intimacy, what I mean is we need to see into, feel into, hear, and deeply understand them. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, you can honestly say at a heart level and a mind level, I understand this person. Mm -hmm. Right. Without having these deep conversations about how all these things are landing with our children, we can't get there. Mm -hmm. And and so what would you say to a parent that whose child comes forward at a very young age and says that um, they don't feel like they're in the right body? Like how, w other than what they do in sort of in the infrastructure of society right now, which is encourage it and nurture that feeling and tell them that it's exactly how it should be and we're going to give you drugs and we're going to do this and do this to, to further that identity misplacement or perceived like well, I would want to understand exactly why a, a person felt like they weren't in the right body because there's a lot of different reasons than just gender mm -hmm. that's number one number two in the first place that I would look as a parent if that if that was somebody coming to me with that let's say I've got a child who's born as one sex and they're saying I'm a different sex I would examine the environment I'm creating and also myself and my relationship to that gender right immediately <laughs> As a parent. Immediately, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Because they're um, saying, there's the, a lot of people, could, they, they're trying to proclaim it to be a social contagion to some degree in youth because of the way it's being propagated. Yes, because because now we're saying, oh, you get more significance and more of these needs mm -hmm. met by being that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, when no, it goes back to that attention, right? Yep. The fame, the yep. attention that they're being, yep. they're hurraying it and putting Except it on a now, the, now there's social approval. That's how I get social approval. Yeah, yeah. and a sense of belonging to a tribe. Yeah. into a subcategory that they fit into you exactly. know, in a place where we all feel like we're not sure where we No, fit. but if I'm dealing with a kid who genuinely doesn't feel good inside of their body, I, it's it's not like I'm going to this, oh, let's change your sex. I'm literally like, well, what is it about your body that we feel like we don't belong in? Mm -hmm. Why don't we belong in this? It's like we, we're doing a deep dive and then I'm just mm -hmm. problem shooting almost at whatever level they yeah. meet me at with. Mm -hmm. well, I don't like the clothes yeah. I wear. Well, let's find clothes we like better. I mean, mm -hmm. it's... yeah. And I feel like that's how it should be because, like, I do agree that there are, there's a certain percentage of people out there in the world and children even maybe that one day come to a point where they're like, I don't feel right in my body. And that, of course, that happens. But wouldn't we, as a society, first need to do the work with that person yes. to understand yes. instead of just send them into oh, yeah. surgery? Hell no. No, that, that is a very drastic, that's the end. That should be literally the end of the road. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's not how it is right now. It's like, the, you know, all of these children that are coming out and saying this, like, why aren't we finding specific therapists for them to really dig deep into this issue? Because most of the therapists don't know how to deal with this. Why is that? Because they they don't understand parts yet. There's the, there's very limited amounts of society that understand that the psyche is, is something that fragments. That's actually, I mean, it's not mainstream, to be honest with you, which mm -hmm. I just can't swallow at the time but, um, mm -hmm. you have to understand that the psyche fragments in order to work with suppressed and disowned and rejected parts of self most of them don't know how to do that so like let's say you know, if you're a therapist working with this and you got a, a, a young you know teen for example who's coming to you saying this let's say that you've got a, a little girl who's saying I, I just I feel like a boy I always felt like a boy I feel like I'm in the wrong body the first place I go is I understand that the femininity is rejected so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at their relationship to their feminine part. I'm going to start to have them go into their femininity, and I'm going to see why. So when we, we, it's, you can only know a person's truth, like actual truth, when you integrate these polarized aspects. Then you've got the truth. But oftentimes when you do this, 
there's some vulnerability, right, that exists in the feminine, for example, or in the masculine, it's the opposite. And it's that vulnerability they're trying to get away from. So that movement towards the I want to be the other or I feel like I am the other is nothing more than you'd see with anybody's protector personality. Mm. Where it, this is what's going to keep me safe and this is what's going to get my needs met. And if you can, can I explain to a person, maybe not necessarily. Like mm -hmm. I understand how this is a product of the environment, but what if we try to make those vulnerable aspects of yourself feel more safe instead of swung the pendulum to such an extreme degree. And most people, when you open up those opportunities, they're like, oh, wait. And they start to reown the part of themselves that they've rejected. Now, I'm all for making these these drastic life changes if it's an integrated choice, but often it isn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it is something that is done in rejection of an aspect of self and is therefore a, an act of violence mm -hmm. against the self. Hmm. And why do you think that this perspective isn't accepted by the mainstream? Like as far because as... it's perceived as anti -L LGBTQ, right? Mm -hmm. When it's the exact opposite, right? Yeah. Would you say, Till, that it's like a soul's perspective? Because in a way, it, like I don't know what your idea of that is, but there's there's no gender on that level, or nationality, or any of those attributes are not even like human. My my opinion on this is that the spiritual community has come in with those truths and has hijacked the beauty of polarity. That's the only honest truth. Oh, that's interesting. I, I mean, you'd expect somebody like myself who has made more of a step, honestly, towards um, androgyny. You'd expect somebody like me to be propagating the idea that this is where we need to go as a species, and I don't agree. I feel like mm -hmm. we're in a crisis of, of gender, and a, mm -hmm. a crisis in terms of we did not arrive here by virtue of integrating and then deciding that we were going to be an example of the best of both polarities. We literally got here by hating each other. Hmm. We got here by making an enemy of femininity when the women's rights movement came out. We made an enemy of femininity and uh, we made an enemy of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Now you can't be either. Yeah. I, this is not an okay place to be. So like the way that I see it is we need to powerfully reown our genders. I mean, absolutely powerfully. And from there, then what? How do you take temperament into consideration in that? Explain. Like sort of the idea that some women have more masculine um, more energies, ma energies yeah. and some men have more feminine energies. Well, that's really complicated. Yeah, no, I know. That's yeah, it's why. really complicated for each person. But here's where I always mm -hmm. go. Let's look at how much of it is trauma. Now, we resolve that trauma, so we take that element out of it, and then you have a more accurate representation of what is soul, mm. what is pre-birth intention, what is genuinely authentic to this person, and what is not. Because so many people make an adaptation. Like, I, I, I mean, I can't, it's like, it's mind boggling. How many people are, are this way? Like a female's mm. like, no, I, I've just always sort of identified as being extra masculine or, or just behaves that way and doesn't even do so on a conscious level. I can tell you how often you go back and it's completely their environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So then it's like, all right, let's reown the aspects you disowned and let's try to resolve some of these traumas. Mm. Then let's see what's true. That's my only argument. I, I like for me, I don't care whether somebody wants to be black or blue or yeah, you know, yeah. a girl or guy. Like I don't care. No. I care whether people are doing this from a space that's integrated. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> no, I think that's like. And how could we, like, in the educational system, more than come to embrace our gender or like to celebrate it, right? Because we don't really have much education oh, on God. this. We're, well, we're going to have to change the entire education system to begin with. That's like a whole yeah. other disaster. Yeah, but yeah, that's... It, the, the, I Honestly, in our society, it's ironic because it's like we almost need to go back and pull from some of these indigenous cultures, which really did understand the value of what each of these energies present. Mm -hmm. And the way that I see it is I, I want people to start to see masculinity and femininity as if they are separate elements. It's like one is fire and one is water. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not like, oh, one versus the other. Or like, let's just be both. No, I'm, I'm sort of like, let's consider that when we came in here, the way mm -hmm. that we came in here, we came in here so as to master that element. Mm -hmm. So as to essentially spread that medicine. Right. And that's going to be what feels the best to the body. So why don't we see the value in that element and why don't we start to express 
that element and deal with and resolve whatever trauma is in the way of that element. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what I'm seeing is is much more the way that we need to go is not towards like androgyny now. It's much more towards, you know, men really, really embodying like for once the conscious masculine and and females, the conscious feminine. Mm -hmm. And I, I want like way more opportunities for little boys, especially to be in those you know, in those energies, same with little girls. We've just, we've made an enemy of both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they, and you think that it was through virtue that we made the enemy? Like, through virtue? Yeah, well, people believing that it's virtuous to, to disassociate from that and to, and it's the, the society of what's around you. It's the right? same, like, it's the same. The reason that we got here, let's just go simple, okay? Yeah. yeah. The reason that we got here is the same reason that we're getting here with the woke culture. You've got a subculture that recognizes there's an issue with the dominant culture. So you have Mm -hmm. a subculture that recognizes that patriarchy was in a form of toxicity. It absolutely was. 100%. If you you go back to the 1950s, you're like, oh, my God, like, I'm, if I'm a woman, I'm off the planet. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) So... So there, I mean, it's undeniable that there was an absolute toxicity that needed to be answered to. But if you've been so wounded by that form of toxicity, so toxicity, how do you not swing the pendulum? And this, and that's the problem. They mm-hmm. swung the pendulum mm-hmm. all the way over here. And so it was, they could not separate their need for these changes within society from their violent hatred of the hurt that mm-hmm. they felt at the hands of the thing that they were up against. Hmm. And what's ironic is they were still reacting to a patriarchal society that was still made for men by men. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're sort of like, we can do what you can do. We're going to be men. So what you notice is like at that time was this huge movement towards a, essentially a gaslight. The gaslight is we're so for women by, by not being women and by hating men. That's